In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to add a protected content section on your WordPress or Elementor website. The protected content is basically this section over here and this over here. Okay, but the page by default is like this from this section, you automatically jump to the team section. After adding the protected content, it will have this other section over here and this over here. So how do we add a protected content section to our WordPress or Elementor website? Remember that we can add a couple of ways to protect our content, maybe using a single password or maybe using a multiple password or even other ways to protect our content. So the first thing that we are going to do is one, we are going to need a plugin. This plugin is called the plus add-ons for Elementor. Once you have it installed and activated, then you are going to simply come over here to the settings and you have to make sure that the protected content uh, widget is activated. By default, I've activated all my sections, but you may not want to do something like that because some of the widgets, you won't be using them. So what you'll do is simply to activate only a section or a widget that you want to be using. So in this case, I'm looking up here for the protected content, which is over right here. So you simply have to have it activated. So once you have it activated, you simply save the changes and uh, we are good to go. Now you open up any page or section that you want to add your protected content. In this case, it is my about page. So when I come over here to pages, I'm going to open up my about page with Elementor. So when I open it up over here, boom, it shows up here. Now remember, I have already added my protected section to this page. But in this case, I am going to add a new one. So I'm going to simply come over here and add a new widget. And in that widget, I'm going to add the protected content widget, which is over here. The widget from the plus add-ons for Elementor. So once I have it added over here, then I'm going to come over here to the edit options. I have to specify the content source of the protected content. In this case, I'm going to use the page template that I've already created. This is the content that I want to show up once someone enters their password or access token to access this content. So I simply have to select my template I've already created because I don't want to use the content by default where I have to type in. But in case you simply want someone to access the written content in the widget editor, you can simply add over here your content. But for me, I want to use a template that I've already created and this template is called Indie Cafe. To create a content or your content that you want to display over here, basically I have to use Elementor. When I come over here to my dashboard, I come over here to templates, you see save templates, you realize that I have two templates over here. The one template is called Indie Cafe, the one that I want to use as my protected content. When I come over here, you realize that the Indie Cafe is this template over here, which was created and it ends over here. Okay, so once you have created this template, then you simply save it and of course it will appear right under here. And that's why we are even in position to select it in this section as our protected content template. Now, next we have to set the protection type. We want to use either a single password, a multiple password, or a user role. Protecting using a user role means that someone must have to be either an administrator, an author, a contributor, a customer, so that they can access that protected content that we have already created. In this case, I don't want to use a user role. I want to use a single password. A single password is set by you and this is where you type it in. So in this case, my single password would be 123456 or 12345. But you can also set a multiple password whereby someone can add a number of different passwords or those passwords you'll be giving them out unique individuals. Let me use just a single password. So in this case, I'll simply leave it to be 123456. And then under the message section, now this is what appears when someone is at the page where they have to access the protected content. This is the message that is appearing. So how do you add that message? You can either have it by default, you do not have permission to show this content, which is over here and using the uh, editor. But I want to use a template and this template is under my Elementor templates. I've already created it and I can choose the template over here and this template is called Hero Inline Video Page. Once I select that template, boom, it will show up over here. 
But hey, you are like, how do I add that template? I've already shown you how to create templates using Elementor and you can simply create your template in Elementor and of course it will show up right like this. So you can edit your uh, information that is over there. When I come back here to my templates, save templates, I'll open up my hero template and I can make changes to my template over here. The one that will bear the message that actually someone needs the password to access that content. So I'm going to change just the background over here, the overlay color. I'll change it to a gradient and boom, I leave it to this gradient, okay? So now I'll simply hit save changes and now my message that is displaying in this section over here will be changed in terms of the design. So when I update over this section, I am going to reload this page. You'll see that this section changes the color in the background and boom, it has already affected. Now, the other thing that we have to do is one, we are going to make changes under here for our submit and input password uh, section, just like this over here. So how do we do that? We simply come back here to our widget. The protection type, of course, is the password. Remember, we have chose to use this template over here. We can, of course, uh, change the form text from enter password to something else. For example, you can say your password. And then over here, we can say access for the button. See, now this has already reflected. And for the error message, in case someone has entered the wrong password or anything like that, you can simply add here the message that will show up. Now, under style, we can go straight to the section that has the form input and the submit button. This is where we are able to adjust how our input form is looking like. So when you come over here to the input, we are going to add an inline padding of something like uh, 150 and 150 on the left and right. And then we are going to give it a top padding of, let me say like 15 and 15 top and bottom. And then later we're going to style up our submit button over here by coming over here to the submit button and we are going to give it like um one the background color or normal is going to be this let me say a green and on hover we are going to change that color to maybe a blue so when someone hovers it changes over just like that and then we are going to add a background over here for this main section here and uh how do we add that background? By clicking over here to the section, number one, we're going to come here to the uh, form input section and we are going to give it a background color and that background color is going to be that color. But in this case, we may not want to use that color. We may simply just want to leave it at default. Okay, and that's how we can manage to set up our form access. But also we can uh, change the background color to something else or instead of changing the background color we can simply use a border and maybe that border is going to have like a solid or like two points and then we give that border a color of something like this or something like that or something that matches our top color just like that and we can increase this to any size that you want maybe a five can work well the same we can do also for the submit button and you can also give it an inner padding 20 and 20 then here we can leave it like at 15 or we can also give it a 20 and a 20 over here and we can change the default background color to another color that we so wish so we can let me say change it to a black and the color of the font is going to be white. And of course, you can also make changes to your typography of the font right there. Okay, and we can even change the font weight to something like that. And we are good to go. So that's how you can style up your form input just right there. Now you can also style up also the error message that is going to show up uh, how you want it to appear. And then also the form content. For the form content is, uh, of course, like I told you, the protected content that we want to show up. In this case, we want to use up 100% of the page, okay, the maximum width. And the same we can also apply on the mobile device. 
we want it to take up 100% of the width and the same on the smartphone. So we want to use 100%. Now, heading back to the desktop version, um, when we come to the protected content section, we also want to use like 100% of the page to display our protected content. The same we want to do on the tablet and the same we want to do on the mobile. And here we of course want to use percentage. We want also here use percentage and on a desktop version, we want to use a percentage. Okay, now those are the most vital updates that we have to do now what we have to do is to update now once you update we are going to preview our page and boom this is how it looks like we have our background we have all this over here we can also uh, style up the inner content so that it's padded clearly well inside over here and then you can also like enter your password which is one, two, three, four, five, and you click on the button to access the content. And boom, now we have been granted access to the content, which is in here. Now we have to make some updates because our protected content is not using up the whole section. So what we are going to do is come back here to our widget, come to our form, and then come over here to our protected content section make sure that the maximum width is set to 100 on all the other devices make sure that it's also set to 100 so this is 100 and the alignment is centered now let me go back to the preview and i come back over here i enter my password i access the content and boom congratulations we have now displayed our protected content using our second widget. Now we are going to remove the first widget that I had used to create this uh, template over here. I come back here to my editor. I'm going to delete this section. I will only remain with this other section. And I'll simply hit update. Once I update, my preview will load up over here. And when I come back again, I enter my password. I access, boom, our protected content shows up over here. I can still open up another browser. Let me say like Firefox. And then I'll enter in my domain. Go dash tutes.com forward slash about. Once my page loads up over here, I'll see my section is showing up also. And I'll simply enter in my password and I access my protected content or someone accesses the protected content that you want them to access once they have that password that you have probably sent them via email. And boom, our content shows up right here. So the good thing is that it is uh, taking up the whole width like we have set it up to take up the whole width for our about page uh, content. And... Uh, this is how it looks like pretty nice now this means that you can also view your content on all different other browsers so this means that actually your visitors are able to view this same content on all different other browsers that they are actually using okay the same also here is actually working pretty well on the safari browser in a nutshell that's how you can add protected content to your elementor or wordpress websites using the plus add-on for Elementor. In case you have any questions or comments regarding this tutorial, please let me know down in the comment box below. In case you are new to the channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss up on new content when I push it out. If you like the video, please give it a like. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.